it is my time that to come and put all my effort, my energy and my spirit to sharing with the people. You must have desire. Yes. You must desire for successful. Yes. So I would think uh, homegrown uh, business entrepreneur is always better than the foreign investor. What is up guys, my name is Charles Liu, welcome to Beast Chat with Charles Liu Season 2. And we are still talking to real business people about real business stuff, but hey, again, why so serious? In this episode, we have to get serious a little bit. You know why? Because we have someone so special, the most special guest I've had on this show, and that's Dr. Patrick Liu. Welcome on the show, Dr. Patrick. Thank you, welcome. Okay. So just a little bit of background about Dr. Patrick, okay? Nine years ago, um, I joined a treasure hunt and I met Dr. Patrick for the first time. Let me just Google him a little bit. So I Google a little bit, and then Tennis Association president, and all of these things came up. I was like, fantastic. And then I realized our youth don't mind as well. Okay, here's the thing, guys. Last season, we spoke to a lot of entrepreneurs asking them about their stories. This season, we're talking about building Sarawak to make Sarawak self-sustaining, okay? If you know, we have Sarawak Pay, we have our own petrol um, stations coming up, we have our own universities coming up and things like that. So I think, you know, this is a perfect time for us to focus on the state, other countries as well, okay? So Dr. Patrick, yes. tell us this, what sparked the idea of our youth.my? Yeah, that is a good question, actually. Uh, as a young boy those days, I like sport. Personally, from school day, I, oh. I enjoy sport. I'm an outdoor person, so I play a lot of sport. So then, since I get involved in tennis associations, I run tennis association in 1995 in managing the association. Then, it, along the way, we grew, and then, um, uh, we organized international event. We attracted a lot of international players coming to Sarawak. Oh. Uh, that makes Sarawak become one of the preferred tournament venue for tennis. So and we will look forward to I want to come to Sarawak because it's so special, greenery, fresh air, peaceful, good food and so on. Oh. So that also gave me a lot of inspiration. I want to do more. Then I can see in between, I get a lot of volunteer come and help Leisman, Chair Empire, and so forth, organizing the event. Then I found that in between, I, there's a lot of potential about young people, sure. but they have been scattered here and there, yeah. they're lost direction and so on. So I decided to come up with, with my team, our you dot my, clear the platform, clear a platform where I can gather all the young people together, yeah. develop them different interests, not tennis alone, yeah. any sport, futsal, basketball, and so yes. on. Because I look at it on this true sport, then you don't talk about politics, you don't talk about the business, you don't talk about religions and races. Yes. Then people can always get together, click very well from there. Then I need a venue. Yes. So that's why we transform the civic center, yes. the area car park, yes. become a, a, a park. The park. Yeah. So that is perfect venue for all the young people get together. So from there, we get support from the government, yes. corporate sector, give us corporate funding to organize the event. Yes. The one that you mentioned is so one of it. Yes. People want to make use of facility. Yes. From then, I think the activity grew sure. and become a central attraction of most of the activity. Understand. And along the way, I, I look at, there's a lot of young people are very good. Yeah. So we keep on play uh, very observation uh, eyes on them. Yeah try to pick up some of the good one potential, develop them into the future leader. Okay. And then uh, this is how we create a social media platform called are you dot my yeah. sharing information. So are you dot my started as a online platform or was it an organization? It's to... an online platform, ah. online platform where I'm the founder of the platform. Sure. I had a team of four or five people that come and put in the, their comment, uh, event sharing and so on. So that getting 
I think until today we have hundred over thousand followers. Yeah, right? yeah. And our youth domain is not just in Kuching because our youth domain has done runs in Miri as well. Yes, and also even West Malaysia, some few other country. Yeah. They also follow up because the international player come for tennis. They also look at it. They also follow up in yes, other yes. country. Now, before we go into talking about helping young businessmen and young entrepreneurs, let's talk about yourself. So, what made you actively pursue? becoming an entrepreneur, knowing that you used to work within an office setting before? After working with the government for many years, mm. then uh, mm. the benefits of working government, you create a lot of networking, you know a lot of people from various, but again, I say you're limited. You only have, every month you wait for the payday. You don't have some money you want to do. During that time, I was still a young man. So I followed my father to the business and so I see of which one month business can probably make a living for one year. Yeah. So if you, I, I calculate for myself, if I work for 20 years, probably I can earn this money in private sector within three years. Yeah. So that means three years uh, income, I can last me for 10, 20 years. So I, then I start looking at business opportunity. Sure. Sure. So then I, but I take this patiently. I learn, I equip myself knowledge, business model and so on. I don't rush and run. when I reach about 45, then I think that is stable, financially stable, family stable, that decided venture into the business. Wow, wow, okay. Yeah, so talking about young entrepreneurs, talking about fresh ideas, let's talk about IQ innovation, right? So being one of the very first of its kind co-working space in Sarawak, I mean, after you've done it, now there are many out, outside. So I, so I love that you have set the trend, right? What prompted the idea of IQ Innovation? After uh, many years involved in youth, through sport, cultural, and so on, so then I said, hey, why not we have this? Let me come out this uh, platform. We do a co-working space. The journey is actually very challenging. No and, doubt about it. And also it's a big learning process for yes. me. So when we started this, Surprisingly, because we do it quite well, design-wise, and the environment, the program that we have, the response is amazing. So we grow from 7,000 square feet to 14,000 oh, feet yeah. today. So we are become the largest private sector, yes. and we have incubation set, incubator status, but MSC status. I, I think something like Startup Weekend that Dato Patrick has actually done, it, it, first and foremost, Startup Weekend is it's a global thing. It's an international thing, right? So it opened the door not just for young entrepreneurs to pitch their ideas, but you actually allow a platform for people like myself to be able to sh use that as a sharing platform, to come on as a judge, to come on as a mentor. So that actually helped to create that ecosystem that, that you are talking about, right? So I think that is fascinating. Now, we'll go to a break. When we come back, we'll discuss about Dr. Patrick Liu's um, vision for Sarawak, okay? We'll be right back. back to Beast Chat with Charles Liu, and we're still with Dr. Patrick Liu, okay? Now, Dr. Patrick, we're now going to talk about your role in the last decade in helping to nurture young entrepreneurs, okay? So, why did you choose to develop Sarawakian entrepreneurs? I was very passionate to look at my own states, my own people surrounding me, doing well. Because through years of the working and experiences, dealing with so many young people, and I think the, our young population deserves someone to help them to lift it, to grow. Because it took me probably 30 years to what, 40 years to what I am. So I, because those say the process are different, are less competitive, more opportunity. But now today is so competitive. Mm. So many graduates, so many capable persons, so many people are rich, rich generation kids and so on. Yes. So it's very challenging. Yes. You cannot take another 20, 30 years to be what 
you are today. Yeah. So we try to condense all this into about three, five years or even maximum 10 years. If you don't grow and you don't expand, that means that probably you will stay away from that. Yeah. So I look at that as opportunity. So I try and move with my present age. I don't think I will have that much energy to go for another 10 years. <laughs> Who knows? So, <laughs> Who knows? So okay. therefore, yeah. I look at it. It is my time that's to come and put all my effort my energy and my spirit to sharing with the people. What are, what are the qualities you're looking for? Well, I think number one, you must have desire. Yes. You must desire for successful. If you don't have desire and you just want, they are there, I want to be there. Yeah. And you don't have that consistency. Not hungry enough. Not yeah. hungry enough. Because I look at it, the quality of person yeah. and the commitment and the big heart to share and helping people. That's why we also engage, remember you for a few talk. And when they learn and successful, are they willing to contribute the same for the others? Yeah. So then it can multiply. Pass grow. it on. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So I think forward. that is only through that Sarawak eventually be a better. We are only behind uh, West Malaysia, not need not to say about Singapore. Yeah. So I think yeah. this is the time that we should live. Uh, uh, scale up our people, especially young, not to be complacent, Honestly. that we have to be hurry up. Right now, the young entrepreneurs are so lucky, right? So they get people wanting to help them and creating organizations to help them. How about you? Like, like, like was, was there someone or was there something that, that actually helped you along the way? But I think you go through the hardship, you go through the challenges, and you will be facing all the frustrations, and you want to do something extra, and then that limits you environmentally or surrounding back. So I tell myself, I don't want to be what retire what I am. So I want to do, to be somebody. Sure. I want to be a leader eventually. So that's right. That made me a lot of the inspiration to myself. Yeah. So there were no incubators back then. It was just you pushing through after getting hit in the face, just get up and go again, right? So let me ask you this. You would know, having gone through that process, that facing challenges, failing, is part of what makes you strong, right? So when, when we are trying to incubate young entrepreneurs, do we allow them to fail some, sometimes? Do you think that is important as well? Yeah, I think it's to be way back in my time, my era is different scenario and current scenario. Don't say you fail, you can climb up, you can walk down. A lot of them have interest, have that sort of push, but the loss of focus and direction. So they try more, I would say, on hobby. But again, can they grab all the best? of the gist of the, the business model. Sure, sure. So that's why uh, I think the growing rate, you can see the growing huge, mm. successful rate still very small. So this is where I think we got to do a lot more extra to push them, these good people to help them. What do you think Dr. Patrick is missing right now in the Sarawakian entrepreneur ecosystem? What's what's missing? Yeah, I think the, the of course, uh, some of them, they have financial support because of the current situation, a lot of them family are well to do, leave a lot of money for them. Yeah. And then they have some group of friends, schoolmate, classmate, willing the same interest come together. Yeah. But they they have not be able to think big, make grow for national or even grower. They only say, look, probably survival. Sure. I can I can have business. I'm the owner. I'm talking for the business. I'm okay with it. So, but the competition that you don't grow, people will love you. So we have to think grower eventually. Sure. So that is the key of that. To reach there, you must be pretty good. And you just have to keep on improving and learning to be there. So I like the theme with Dr. Patrick. Everything is about the long term. And, and, I, and I think that is the gist of a business because you want your business to be making meaning and to make meaning you, you will need to be able to sustain long enough for you to actually make that meaning that you're trying to make. Precisely. Yeah. Look, I can, we started small but we know we're going to be there. Oh yeah. We look at market expectation, demand, so we grow and we make it, when you make it sizable, big enough, anybody who will come around the challenge, you have the mess. Yeah. You are always big enough. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. big enough, you must have a capital. Yeah. And you can, capital, you must be able to sustain. Yes. And from there, 
your team. Yes. You have much expertise. Yes. You must have the program. Yeah. You how to grow it. So I think this is all become eventually become a big organization as a whole. The co-working space in overseas is huge business. Yes. It's international, like the ground, common ground, and yes. so many big yes. business that all over the world. What you're saying, let's just use IQ innovation as a company, as an example, because you started this thing in, in a time when there was no co-working space. Because you were one of the first to do it, you knew exactly why you wanted to do it. You know the reasons behind you wanted to do it. So during tough times, you were able to rely on the reasons. Everybody can copy your facility. People can copy your idea. Then where is, where is your content? And where is your, 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 your program that you can bring yeah. into different... People come here, people not just doing work. Yes. Otherwise, it's not different from any other yeah. co-working space. Yeah. So uh, we send our team to Singapore, yes. Thailand, yes. Philippines. Saw, yeah. We travel many countries. Yeah. We sign MOU with various countries. Yes. And then they pick out, attend conferences and yes. so on. So they come up new idea, new system. We just sign up uh, MOA with GX, of which bring in the international uh, program to Sarawak. Yeah. We have signed up uh, exclusivity for Sarawak uh, entrepreneurs only. Yeah, yeah. From there, we look at it, there's opportunity that we can work together uh, to support inter program. Sure. That even with the government uh, NGO like Tegas, eventually I think that we can even grow much faster on that. We'll go to a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the way forward for Dr. Patrick and the way forward for young entrepreneurs in Sarawak in the coming next three years, okay? We'll be right back. back to Beast Chat with Charles Liu, and we're still with Dr. Patrick, and this is our final segment. So we're gonna talk about the way forward, okay? We always end our shows with, what can we do as a people to help young entrepreneurs? But before we get to that, let me just ask Dr. Patrick, what do you wanna achieve, Dr. Patrick, um, in the startup landscape in the next three years? Yeah, I look at it um, because of the current situation, especially after the COVID-19, damage quite a lot of economy, the progress planning and so on. So we actually make some adjustment and changes to suit uh, the, our planning and requirement. Yeah. Then uh, we look at it, uh, those days early before COVID, our occupation rate here is about 120% waiting list. Wow. Now, we can see still about 85. Sure, that's still pretty good, right? Yeah, still pretty good, yeah. as I said. But again, I say, inter-occupation, uh, yeah. But what happened to the, 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 the business grow? So then also for IQ, we, we cannot just depend on renters and so on, because you will never make money through renters. So what we have in mind, actually part of planning many years already, we're going to into investment. So we are going to invest the company, have good idea. We invest the human capital who actually are willing to, we with a partner, any new business owner, we are willing to grow. Sure. So we want to be the venture capitalist. Yeah, sure. Wow, okay, okay. So, so let me ask you this. From, from, from a VC perspective, right? I mean, for you, when you go into a business and you say, right, I'm going to invest in you, what, what are you looking for? Well, I look at number one, the business model. Sure. It cannot be just copy and paste. It got to be something very unique sure. or something different. Sure. And there's a potential to grow. Sure. What we don't uh, lacking here in Sawa as a general, the scaling and upscale is a bit slow. And a bit because people don't see the potential of global, national group and global. Mm. So this is something the area I, of course, I also look at the person. Uh, what my first expectation, honest business matter, willingness. Yeah. They want to go with you, go long term. Yeah. They are not going to go and I, 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 have, I can make some money, I'll dissolve the partnership sure. or start changing their mind and yeah. so on. So yeah. I think this is something that we're not looking at. Sure. And of course, we also look at 
what is the expected the future market to be. Yeah. We got to foresee. We cannot wait until it happens. Yeah. It's always been too late. Sure. For example, we started our ramen business. No one have it. Yeah. And we provide something that very yeah. unique. Yeah. And the first one I again. love it, by the way. Yes. I love it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Same thing when we do a Japanese yeah. restaurant. Yes. So as I mentioned, we go to a Korean restaurant. Yes. And so, so this is something that I'm looking at, potentially grow. So from your position as a v VC, for example, if you were to invest in a business, would you go for equal shares or would you just get 10, 20% and put some funds in and then that's, and then that's it? I always look at it, you. If you want to be a partner, you cannot control people. Because let pe people, whoever want to partner you, because they already have their, their goal, yeah. want to be the owner. Yeah. And you can support them uh, be as a VC yeah. and you guide them, mentor them. So I will look at 20, 30 maximums on that. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. then they are comfortable with you as a support VC yeah. and you helping them to scale their business. Sure. Then they, that will be long term. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Okay. So once you're controlling, they feel that I'm working for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. That is true. That is true. Okay. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. As a final question, um, I think a lot of our viewers, there are some business people out there. There are some young people out there as well. As the people, as Sarawakians, to help young entrepreneurs in the state. Because at the end of the day, the whole economy is run by businesses, especially SMEs. SMEs make up 98.5% of businesses in Malaysia. So um, I think whatever you're doing to help young businesses is exactly what's needed. But what can we do as a people to help young entrepreneurs? I look at it, uh, we like to create a, a platform, what we are doing now, let the other bigger corporation or even government look at it. I only, as a private sector with limited resources, I only can do this much. But I can create this, the ripple that yeah. you see is worth supporting, worth how to grow using your resources. Then you have to create the whole ecosystem through government or corporates. Then look at your, your politically stable, your economy in the autonomy is good, opportunity uh, much better, and most, most of them, the office graduate or stay been working here, I'm sure they're facing challenges now. They, I don't think they're that happy as they, what they are those days. Yeah. So, and then especially now with these people, anti-Asian kind of thing. So most of them feeling not so nice to stay in overseas. Yeah. They like to come back. I meet quite a lot of them coming back for good yeah. because their frustration or their feeling of insecurity and so on. Yeah. But they come back, they must look at where it is my opportunity. Am I giving an equal footing or equal opportunity to survive yeah. or grow. And I'm sure it, it is, once it created this type of environment, more and more people will start attract them to come here back. Because currently we outflow of our human capital is very heavy. Yes. Of course, certain sector like technology and so on, maybe Singapore area, like medical and so on, people, no choice, you cannot get a job here. Yeah. But eventually, eventually you create opportunity. People look at it. Why not? My family here, my friends here, I sure. come back here. So this is something I, I think that that scenario should happen probably next five years or ten years sure. eventually. Would you say, um, because there are so many local entrepreneurs um, from Sarawak, and I'm very sure you have seen businesses rise and fall within the space of three to five years, right? So there's a movement now which is to support local businesses to when you can, then you do it. So basically, if you have the choice between um, a foreign business and a Sarawakian business and the quality is about the same, then to choose to buy local, what, what do you think about that? Well, I, I think that some, if, to buy local, we are more familiar and we are also closer to our heart that we be able to the one. And eventually, I mean, we are a small community. We know everybody. Somehow at the end, you say, oh, I know your father and so on, so on, your friend, schoolmate, classmate, somehow. So that click, actually, the chemicals, chemistry yeah. is much better, easier. Yeah, yeah. So I would think uh, homegrown uh, business entrepreneur is always, you always have the opportunity to go up again. Yeah. All you need to make adjustment and improvement, yeah. and you will always, 
earn a living there. There's no issue for I love that message. That, that is a positive way for us to close out today's episode. And I'm so thankful for Dr. Patrick for coming on the show. I mean, we've learned so much just from this short time. So guys, we're at the end of the show. Here's the, a very quick message. At the end of the day, if you are a young businessman, if you are a young entrepreneur, if, if you're just thinking about starting something, um, just remember that there are people out there wanting to help you, okay? People like just this place here, the um, IQ Innovation, is one of the many co-working spaces that you can actually leverage on at the very early stage of your startup when you're not able to afford anything, a place like this would be able to help, help you. And there are a lot of other facilities and infrastructure. You need to only be resourceful for you to look for these things, okay? So until the next episode, it's a bye from us. Thank you.